Today, I'm going to be testing another trading strategy. This time, it's a simple EMA crossover. It has really easy entry and exit rules, and I've tested it on hundreds of trades over five years of data in order to verify it. I will first test out the base strategy and then show you some adjustments that took the strategy from this to this. Let's begin by going over the core strategy rules. This is a trend following strategy and it can be traded on different time frames, but for this specific backtest, I'm going to be trading on the 15 minute chart. I use these two exponential moving averages, EMAs, as the crossover signals. If you don't know how to add them, let me just delete one of them and show you how to add it on. So I've still got the 8 EMA. I will add the 5 EMA now. I just search for EMA and it gives me the moving average exponential. That will add the blue line on the screen. By default, it gives you a 9 period EMA. So I'm going to go into the settings and change that to a 5 period. And while I'm here, I'm going to change the style of it a little bit by thickening up the line, just so it's a bit more visible. This is a really popular combination of moving averages. There are loads of popular combinations out there, and I've tested quite a few in my back test, but the five and the eight performed better than the rest of them. Now that I have my two lines on the chart, the setups are quite straightforward. I'm waiting for my five period EMA, the blue line, to cross above the eight period EMA, which is the orange line. And I can see that happens on this green candle here. That becomes my signal candle. So my entry is at the open of the next one. So I'm going to put an entry here. The stop loss goes to a swing low. So I'm bringing it down to here. When I back test this, it's a little bit difficult to define an actual swing low. So for the purpose of the test, I've basically just taken the lowest of the last 10 candles which will generally give me the recent swing low. And after that, I aim for a one to one risk to reward ratio. Now that might seem low, but this is a starting point and I'm going to compare other take profit ranges later on in the video. Once that trade runs its course, which actually happens within just a few candles, I then wait until the next setup. This strategy can be traded short as well, but in my test, I've only back tested long positions. Let's jump over into the code and actually run that backtest. I'll very quickly explain what some of this code does and then go into the results. I'm testing on a 15 minute time frame on the S&P 500. And for now, I'm just looking at the strategy on its own, but I will later compare it to a buy and hold to see which one performs better. A starting balance of 100 just for reference and risking 2% on each trade. The market opens at 9.30 and closes at 5 p.m. So 16.45 is the final 15 minute candle. And I'm allowing entries all the way up until the end, but we'll come back to that as well. Then I've got my fast and slow EMA. And this is actually how I can quickly test different combinations if I wanted to. And the rest of these variables don't matter just now. I then load in my data from a CSV file. This section is where I work out my various inputs, like my fast and slow EMA and my swing low, which I spoke about earlier, which just takes the low of the last 10 candles. After that, I can generate my signals. And this is where I have the various conditions that are set for the strategy. The main condition is that the fast EMA needs to cross above the slow EMA. That's what gives me that EMA crossover. Once I have these various conditions defined, I can then generate signals for my strategy as long as all of those conditions are true. I then set my stop loss at the swing low and then my take profit, which is based on the take profit ratio. For now, it's set to one to one risk to reward, but I'll test a few others later on. Now I can run this whole back test and look ahead to the results. The initial results don't look too bad, starting with a balance of 100 in 2020, finishing up with around 275-ish, about five years later. Then we take a look at some of the key metrics, annual return of 22 and a half with a drawdown of 35, which is quite high for that kind of return, a win rate of 52% and a risk to reward of about one. It's not bad, but it's certainly not great. The drawdown is quite high and also the curve isn't particularly smooth. There's a two year period in the middle here of pretty poor performance. But this gives me the starting point to now improve on. 
the first thing I wanted to check is whether time of day matters for my entry. I noticed this in one of my recent backtests, which is that when I group all of the trades by the hour in which they were opened, I can see firstly how many trades fall into that hour, and secondly what their average return was. And what I found in the last backtest, and now in this one as well, is that trades that are taken later on in the day seem to have a negative return and most of the profit is made within the first couple of hours. Based on that, I'm going to limit the backtest to only trade between the hours of 9.30 and 12, essentially the morning, so after the market opens and until about lunchtime. If I change this latest entry hour to 11.59 and rerun the strategy, I'm now going to get a very different equity curve from before. Now I'm seeing not only greater returns, but lower drawdown and generally just a smoother performance. Taking a look at the metrics, the annual return has improved quite a lot to 46% and the drawdowns actually dropped to about 22. Win rate of 55 and the risk to reward still sits around 1. This is a big improvement and I would say based on this alone, the strategy does seem to work pretty well. There is one caveat here though, which is the duration of the trades. The longest trade duration was 14 days. And that's because every trade is left to run to completion. So it has to stay open until it hits either the stop loss or the take profit. And that often means holding the trades overnight. But if that's not an option and the preference is to day trade, then it's possible to add another condition here, which is exit end of day. If I set this value to true, then any trades that don't hit their stop loss or take profit by the end of the day are simply closed out when we get to the last candle. And you can see from this curve that it does affect the performance. Previously, the final balance was around 700. It's now at about 500. The results are still quite good. So even with that restriction, this strategy does still seem to perform pretty well. All of that testing is based around using a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. And when I looked at the various trade examples, I can see that it's easy to quite often hit much more than that. After all, this is a trend trading strategy. So it should be possible to get an entry early on and then just hold it for four, five, six to one risk to reward. And I can test that out using this code block here. I've got a variable called TP range in which I define a range of values for my take profit. I started with a 1 to 1 ratio, but I'm going to test it all the way up to 8, not inclusive, so it will test from 1 to 7. And when I rerun that code, I get this chart with all of the different values overlaid. The reference line is the yellow one. That's the one I started with, and that's my take profit of 1 to 1. And you can see that actually all of the other take profits, with the exception of the light blue, came in underneath that one. The light blue is a take profit of 6 to 1 and it definitely generates a better return. But there's always a trade-off with these. If I go down here, I can compare the metrics a little bit better side by side. So the ones in this vertical column are for the one to one take profit, and the ones in this column are the six to one take profit. So it did generate a bigger return, but it also had twice as much drawdown. The risk to reward was almost six. Sometimes it doesn't hit exactly six because of gaps, and the win rate was around 20.5%. It really just comes down to traders preference for which type of strategy they would like to trade. But what this test did show me was that apart from this one outlier, a one to one risk to reward ratio actually performed better than a lot of the other values. The last thing that I want to do is compare the strategy to buy and hold. The yellow is still the strategy just like before and the blue is buy and hold. And this is effectively tracking the price of the S&P 500 over the last five years. So the strategy has outperformed significantly. I can compare the metrics side by side as well. Annual return as well as drawdown, the strategy performed better than buy and hold. I then wanted to get a better look at the comparison between the strategy and buy and hold. So this chart here is the performance of both of them grouped together by year. The blue line is the strategy and the orange line is buy and hold. So every year that I tested for the last five years, with the exception of 2023 actually, the strategy outperformed buy and hold in terms of percentage return. 
Finally, let me do a quick recap of the rules with another trade example. I'm waiting for a crossover between the blue and orange lines, but now I know that I'm only trading within market hours. For that, it's important that I set my time zone correctly. I need it to be in the New York time zone so that I'm seeing the correct times at the bottom here. That means that all of this choppy trading, for example, wouldn't generate any signals. Even though there are crossovers, this is all before the market opens. I wait until the 9.30 candle, after which I can then finally start the trade. And in this example, this candle right here is the open candle, but it also is where the two EMAs cross. So this is my signal. I will then take a trade at the open of the next candle, as long as this is still within the first two hours of the day. If this was a little bit later, after 12 o'clock, then I would let the signal go and I wouldn't take it. The stop loss then goes at the lowest of the last 10 candles which is typically going to be the swing low. And I aim for a one-to-one -one risk to reward. In this case, that was hit pretty quickly. But if it didn't, then I would just hold it until that happened. If neither the stop loss or take profit were hit by the end of the day, then there's a decision to be made. Either I hold the trade overnight or just close it out there and then. Both of those approaches still work. But I think this is an interesting backtest and it seems to give promising results. These kinds of strategies are super common. So let me know if you've had experience with EMA crosses yourself and what kind of settings you've typically tried. Alternatively, if you have suggestions for other strategies that you'd like me to backtest, then drop them in the comments below. And finally, if you want to see more of these, then please leave a like and consider subscribing.